Welcome to the second of our four special Walkthrough Voices Christmas edition. This year we're doing something really different. It's, it's common to focus on all the different characters in the nativity and you know you got the shepherds and the wise man and Joseph and Mary. I've even, I've even been a sheep and a donkey in my acting career and not just as a child either. But you know there's one character who's so often overlooked even though he's mentioned multiple times in Matthew and especially emphasized by Luke and that's the Holy Spirit. Last week we talked about how the, the Holy Spirit was really, the, the Holy Spirit came upon Mary, overshadowed her is the term the angel used, helped her to supernaturally conceive. And we talked about this, that, that even Jesus himself is impacted and part of his, the story of his incarnation, of him becoming flesh is, is made possible by the Holy Spirit. But you know, we, we just kind of read right over the part of the story that relates to Mary because I was so eager to talk about Jesus. But let's focus on Mary today and the Holy Spirit's role in her life. In, in Luke chapter 1, you know, we meet this woman, Mary. She's young, um, uh, almost certainly a teenager. She's betrothed. She's promised to Joseph. Engagement was a lot more binding back then than it is now. You're not together in sexual intimacy, but you're really in a lot of ways married. And, and you know, the, they've got all their plans maybe for the big synagogue wedding. Have they hired the best cake baker, you know, in their community? Have they got uh, somebody to carve images into stone so their pictures are preserved forever? I, I don't know. But we meet this woman, it says, a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, greeting, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great. He will be the son of the Most High. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary hears all this, and she says, How will this be? How is this possible? For I'm a virgin. And the angel answered her, this is what we talked about last week, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. But I, I don't want us to just think of Mary as this, this vessel that, that this is happening to or happening in. The wonderful part of the story, and I think this is part of the Spirit's indwelling of her too, is if you skip a couple of verses, it says in verse 38, And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. I think this is part of the Spirit's ministry in and through, but especially to Mary. This, this willingness, this somehow supernatural faith that she had to go, I still don't understand it. You've given me a little bit, but I don't, I don't get those details. This doesn't sync with what they taught us in biology class in sixth grade. This is not the way babies are born, yet I'm your servant. It's not what Joseph and I had planned. She's still got some awkward conversations with him, with her parents, with the in-laws, with the city, and yet she says, I'm all in. I'm willing. Be it unto me as you have spoken. You know, I don't think God will call any of us to as tough an assignment as Mary was given. Oh, it's a blessing to be sure. But sometimes for God's plan to be born in us and through us, our dreams have to die. And I think it was the Spirit of God, not just the angel as messenger, the Spirit of God that gave Mary the faith to believe, the depth of understanding wisdom far beyond her age as a young teenager. I think the Holy Spirit gave her that, and I think that same wisdom is available to us. 
That encourages me because part of the Christmas story is getting that off the page and into our lives, that it's not just something that happened back then in history, but it's something that God wants to birth that same kind of faith and trust and willingness to obey and follow in you and in me, just like in Mary. So what's he asking for you this Christmas season? Is it reaching out to a relative where that, that relationship is so strained, maybe even broken right now? Does he want you to make the first move? Is he calling to an unusual act of generosity this season? Maybe you've just been through grief this year and, and he's inviting you to experience joy in the midst of your grief. It's the Holy Spirit who indwells us and makes it possible for us to say, I don't understand it. I'm, I'm not even sure I'm feeling it completely. But what you said, let it be, Lord. That's the lesson of Mary to us and her relationship with the Holy Spirit. Think about this, that this week, and we'll see you again next week, and we'll look at some more characters in the Nativity story.